This figure revisits the endocrine system, and this is very similar to a figure that I posted in that particular chapter. But this gives us an opportunity to tie together the male reproductive anatomy with uh, the hypothalamus, the anterior pituitary gland, and the concept of negative feedback. Remember, the purpose of negative feedback is to maintain homeostasis. So we go back to uh, the endocrine system. Remember, the hypothalamus releases GnRH, gonadotropic releasing hormone. That causes the anterior pituitary gland to secrete two hormones, FSH and LH. Now, remember, gonadotropic, the gonads, trophic means to stimulate. So FSH and LH in the males will accomplish two things. FSH will facilitate this process of spermatogenesis. You don't need to worry about the Sertoli cells in this class. Just know that FSH stimulates the process of spermatogenesis. Um, and then the other hormone, LH, affects another type of cell found in the testes. It's not in the seminiferous tubules. It actually sits outside the seminiferous tubules called, called the Leydig cells or sometimes the interstitial cells. It's be found between the uh, seminiferous tubules. These are the cells that are responsible for the production of testosterone. Testosterone is needed as well for spermatogenesis. So this is why a male won't produce sperm until he's reached puberty, because at puberty, the Leydig cells become functional, produce the testosterone that's needed for spermatogenesis. So the positive sign indicates a stimulatory effect. Now, how do you maintain regulation with regards to the activity at the level of the testes? Remember, the Leydig cells are going to produce testosterone, and that testosterone will feed back in a negative manner at two points. The first is at the level of the anterior pituitary gland to decrease secretions of FSH and LH. The other is at the level of the hypothalamus to release, uh, decrease, excuse me, the release of GnRH. Now, we're not going to worry about inhibin in this class. Again, if some of you go on to anatomy and physiology, you'll talk about that. But the idea is we have negative feedback control. So if testosterone levels are high, then there's no need to keep churning out more testosterone and more sperm because everything is going well. So we would see a reduction in FSH and LH. But when testosterone levels drop, then we would see that block on both the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary gland released. We would have GnRH released, which would allow also the release of FSH and LH. So this concept of negative feedback control and homeostasis, we've observed in multiple systems. It's just one of the crucial concepts in human physiology, and I certainly want to make sure you leave this class with a firm understanding of it.